In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to navigate the uh, Blackboard site for your Reformation class. So if you follow my um, cursor, I'll, I'll show you how to, to move around. You will always come in on the home page and uh, there's various things on the home page to look at, the calendar, um, a to-do list, what's new, my tasks, um, etc. Um, so the main menu is on the uh, left hand side here where I'm indicating uh, with the arrow and um, you have various things to look at um, the first thing you will do is, is look at uh, the check-in um, box um, this just asks you to introduce yourself uh, if you haven't already done so some students have already done this um, there's a link to the syllabus and to the books to buy um, the course is organized by um, uh, weekly assignments. So when you click on the weekly assignments tab, you will get um, a, another set of folders coming up which uh, will give you the um, assignments um, week by week in, um, in four sections, five sections. Um, so obviously we're starting on week one. Um, so you want to click on week one, uh, weeks one to three and then you will see um, the, them divided up by the specific dates of uh, the, the due dates of the class. Um, so when you click on week one you'll be uh, shown what readings you're supposed to do. This is another link to the same Introduce Yourself blog if you didn't uh, get it the first time around. Um, this was a quick test um, to see how uh, various devices uh, relate to mobile compatible tests, whether the, the some devices, um, particularly uh, BlackBerry, I think may have problems with the mobile um, uh, tests. It's um, I have added a grade for it, but it's um, I, I, I'm being very lenient on it because it's mainly um, a test of your devices. And if you don't have a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, it doesn't matter. You can still do it on uh, on the black uh, on the uh, on your laptop. Okay, so then we get into the um, uh, content of the first week's work. Um, and before I go to the, the blog, which is where you're going to uh, do your work, I'll just explain to you what else there is here. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the Reformation or European history in the 16th century, um, then you would probably do well to take a quick read through um, this PDF that I've sent. It's a couple of chapters from a book called uh, The Concise History of Christianity. Um, it's always a good idea when you're going into a new subject, if you have very little familiarization with you, to read a good general background about it so that um, everything that you then read is going to make more sense to you. And um, I've added a few other readings. These are completely optional. Um, Shagan's Popular Politics and uh, the English Reformation. This might be a useful thing to um, um, read for those of you who are interested more in um, the political side of the Reformation, but also how ordinary people related to it or um, issues uh, such as um, sermons or propaganda. Um, I've taken a quote from Shagan's um, Popular Politics and use that for the assignment. So if you want to look at the wider context, uh, context of the um, uh, quote that's used in the assignment, you could also, also look at it here. I think it's on page 3031. Um, I've also attached three reviews um, of Stripping of the Altars, the book, first book w that we're reading. Um, it's an old uh, grad school um, a trick that you should always read at least one review of a book before you start to read it. Um, most of the time in grad school you really don't have the luxury to read the whole book uh, from beginning to end. Um, you know, I'm not saying skip your reading or do it lightly, but if you, you, it's more important that you get an understanding of what the book is about, what the argument is about, and doggedly try to go through um, it page by page. Uh, so a good place to start is by um, reading a review. Again, you get a good overview of what the argument is, so that when you jump into the book, um, you um, you know you know off the bat what what it is you're reading, and you don't have to try and puzzle it out quite so much. Um, 
I would always suggest reading at least the first uh, and last chapter of uh, any book that you're given and um, cherry pick from the middle parts uh, which parts may be more, um, uh, uh, more interesting, more useful to you. Um, so we'll go back now to the, um, the blog and when uh, a link is active, when it's going to take you somewhere else, I'll put it in blue. I'm sure you're all familiar with that from Wikipedia, etc. Um, so when you go to the, um, the blog page, um, you can read the instructions of, of what's expected uh, from, this, from the blog. In this case, you need to um, um, write in 400 words um, a response to this quotation that I've given you below, which again I said was from um, Ethan Chagan. Um, so the I will, I'll, I'll let you read the instructions for yourself. It's probably going to make more, more sense than me giving a, a summary here. But around 400 plus words with, um, with pictures. I'm going to do a separate tutorial which will show you how to uh, put pictures in that are the right size. Um, so basically you read Chagan's quotation below which um, sums up the importance of Duffy's book. And um, then using examples from Duffy's book, the examples that he used, uh, write an illustrated blog which has pictures that explains his principal arguments and how he uses his proof. And in addition, I want you to search the internet or your books, if you have <laughs> books, um, and find an additional piece of evidence which could be used to add to his argument. Um, it can be for or against it. If you don't agree with Duffy, you can also find um, uh, an argument against it. And But this evidence has to be pr a primary source. Um, so uh, it can be written, visual, or material source, but it has to be um, a primary source. You can't use a secondary source um, hi historian. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, and that's given you a, a quick um, look around the site for what you need to do for the first day of class.